So, hello and welcome back. Um, today I'm going to make um, a session about Power BI and how you can use AX data uh, within Power BI. So we are, what we are going to do is nothing else than we are going to connect um, our Power BI desktop. Actually, so I'm going to work with our Power BI desktop to, um, well, to a Dynamics 365, so the new version of AX, and we are going to make um, such an analysis in the end um, totally from scratch as always. So first of all, what you have to do is actually, um, yeah, you need to download Power BI Desktop to be able to um, to <laughs> to use it actually. So um, yeah, what you have to do is nothing else than uh, on Google. It is actually free, so you can just go on Google, search for Power BI Desktop. And, well, I'm quite sure that you will find it then here somewhere. And, yeah, and then you can just download it and then you are all ready as well here. Of course, it will look a little bit different because you won't have any data in it in the beginning. So I'm just going to quickly close it and I'm just going to reopen Power BI Desktop just to have a blank new file. So perfect, and well, I don't want to open the other file, so I just click. So I just basically just click here, and I have a totally blank new um, thing where actually nothing is in it. So no table, no um, relations, and of course as well no report. So first of all, I'm just going to save that file. Just click save as, and I just call it Power BI Test, and now it's saved it. Perfect. So, of course, first of all, what we need to do is actually um, to connect our Power BI file to um, Dynamics 365, actually. Now, it actually depends where you have your MD365. So, um, is it in the cloud or is it um, somewhere on a SQL server, somewhere on premise? Um, in my case, since I'm working on a virtual machine, I do have it basically just on premise, so local somewhere here on my SQL server. Just basically to set it is exactly the same with AX2012. Um, you just basically just need to connect somehow with um, your server or with your cloud. Um, database. So first of all, what you need to do is just to click here on get data. And as you can see, you can, you have here several kind of possibilities. I just quickly click on more. So now if you have here a look at all, then you see somewhere um, Dynamics 365 online. So which means nothing else. And if you would have your data in the cloud, then you're able to connect over that. You just need to use then your um, URL, so basically nothing else than the URL that you have up here, and then just add API data and then v8.2, for example, and click on OK and connect, and then you should be able to connect to your uh, database within the cloud with your credentials. Good. Since as I said, since I do have my data um, on premise, so local on a SQL server, I'm just going to connect directly with my SQL server. Of course, I do need to know the server name. Uh, within AX, it is more or less kind, quite similar like in uh, AX 2012. So on the system administration, um, you will find on the server configuration, you can also go to the inbound and outbound port, You should, but you should find it somewhere, the server name actually, which you can use to connect which means i'm just going to connect to that server and since i want to connect to the ax database i do have several databases in here on that server i'm just going to say well i'm, I'm going to connect to ax db if you don't know these things um ask your internal it department they i'm quite sure they can help you and do know what to do or yeah maybe you also don't have kind of like the um the um the permission to access to access uh, to the database so maybe you just need to talk to them they can definitely help you well okay so now i'm on a list with basically nothing else than all the different tables within ax now um of course you need to know what kind of analysis you want to do so which means i'm going to make a sales analysis so this means i need to know well what table do i need to add and Let's just quickly go to um, Dynamics 365. So I, first of all, just go quickly um, on a sales order. So I just go here to, um, 
and all sales orders. <laughs> Good. So, and well, you need to, as, as I said, you need to know what you want to analyze. So if I would basically, if I want to analyze kind of like sales order, then I would go and use the sales table. So to say the sales table here and the sales line. So just quickly open the sales order, which means in such a case where I want to analyze um, sales order data, then I would just basically use these kind of tables. So I would use here the sales line and I would use data from the sales table. Why do I know how it is called? So basically it is in AX 2012, it is a bit um, easier. Here it is a little bit, um, little bit more difficult. <laughs> but uh, if you click, if you right click and go to form information, then you basically have here the form name. So you know, okay, well, that's um, sales table and under manage and administration, you basically see, well, okay, it is the form from the sales table and And of course, the, sale, the data source basically is the one, the important one, so which is the, the table where you are on. And since I clicked here on the line, I'm here on the sales line and not on the sales table. So the form, the form itself is um, just the whole thing, and the data source is then always the table where you are on. So yeah. But as I said, we are not going to do an analysis on sales orders. We are going to do an analysis based on sales invoices, which means uh, in this case, I just go here on the invoice just to see how the table is there. There is called. Good. So I um, click, I click on the invoice and now I'm actually here on the invoice header and here is the invoice lines. Now, Basically, always if you build up something, you do need to have kind of like um, a facts table, which is nothing else than the lowest granularity of data. In this case, we are going to use um, the sales, the sales invoice lines. Actually, so basically, just these information here to have to use as our facts table. So I just need to know how it is called. So I just click here on form information, and then I open here the administration. And then I see, well, the data source is cost invoice trans. Perfect. Which means nothing else than, okay, I just need to look, well, what is on that table. So which means as soon as I, as soon as I know the table, I'm able to go on the table browser. It works a bit different compared to um, AX 2012. So um, I actually just have it here in uh, Google Chrome. So in Google Chrome, Chrome, you have the possibility to um, download to download um, an add-in, which is called Table Browser, actually for um, Dynamics 365. You do find it here, actually. So um, yeah, you just need to type in that whole link to get to this uh, site, and then you have here basically the possibility to download to download this add-in, which means nothing else that you are able to use the Table Browser um, in your in your web browser like you used to use it in AX 2012. So, which means nothing else, I can click here and I can say, well, search for table name. I can either say, well, I type in here a name or I can say, just give me the whole list. And I have here now the whole list of the database, uh, data tables in AX. So I just go and add here, as I said, cost, oops, cost invoice trans. So I do have here the table and I can click on it and then it looks quite similar actually that you have in here um, the cost invoice trends. Of course, there is no data because I'm in the debt mandate where I don't want to be, of course. So I just quickly choose here the company uh, USMF. SMF. And an error. Okay. Um, yeah, I wrote the wrong name, so I, I wrote um <laughs> I wrote USFM instead of USMF actually. So um when I'm back here on Tail Browser, just enter your USMF and I click on cost invoice trends and now I should see 
the data because now I am in the USMF uh, legal entity actually. So um, yeah, it's the tail browser looks exactly the same as in AX 2012. So you do have several kind of like data. We are on the sales invoice line, so on a quite low granularity where you have where you have um, the item ID, the revenue, where we have um, the item name, and so on. So this means. As I said, the most important thing in the beginning is just to know which kind of table you do where you're going to use as a facts table. And in our case, we are going to use cost invoice trans, which means when I go back to Power BI Desktop, I can just go here in the navigator and search for cost invoice trans. And then I do here, I do have here the table and I do have also some views. We are going to have a look at the views um, later on. For the moment, we are, are just going to search, uh, use our table. So you see here um, this kind of like icon, which means uh, it is a table. So I click on OK and I just say, well, I do want to load this table. And Power BI is actually now going to load the whole table into an in-memory table in, in, in here within um, Power BI Desktop, actually. So it's just going to create um, a connection at the moment. It's then going to load all the data. But as soon as they are loaded, once I do have it in memory, so I do have it in my Power BI Desktop file available and in memory, actually. So which means in the end, if you're going to analyze the data, it will be quite fast. It's just always the load which takes um, a bit, but you, as you can see, it is also not that um, slow. So it is quite fast because he's knowing it's not going, he's not going to do any kind of um, relations. He's always just kind of like copying every table, uh, every table into Power BI. So also if you have the relation, uh, related tables, um, the load into Power BI always, always just table by table, which is quite fast. Good. So if you go here now to uh, this area um, of the relationships, you see that we do have now um, this table here available. And we actually we would be actually already kind of like able to say, well, okay, I do want to make a report. Let's say, um, well, I do want to have um, the data area ID, so basically nothing else than the different kind of like companies. And I do want to see the line amount MST. So I would always already be able kind of like to see here some kind of like information, which is actually already available on, which is available on this table. So for example, also if I would say, well, okay, I do want to have here something over time and also the invoice line, so line amount MST. And then maybe I don't I don't want to see the quarter, but I want to see the month, and I can go down, and then I would yeah, and yeah. So which means I already do have some kind of like possibilities with just this table. Of course, they are not yet that uh, fancy and not yet that great, but um, yeah. So okay, but what are we going to do right now? So first of all. Um, we are going to use Power Query at first, basically just to um, get rid of some data to um, to say, for example, we're just going to we just want to have two um, two kind of like legal entities in our analysis. So yeah, that that would be that would be the first thing that we are going to do. So um, actually, since we just have one table in the beginning, we are going to add. Um, we are going to add others uh, later on, but uh, for the beginning, we are just going to here and go and say edit query. So home and edit query, which means we are now open Power Query, which means nothing else actually that we are that we are able in here to um, adjust our query um, to adjust our query basically, and all the time in, um, when the data is loaded or something or the file is um, recreated, he's going to do this query as well. So I always basically think about well, what kind of information do I want to have within my analysis? And everything else I don't want to have, I'm just going to delete. Basically, I'm going to do it differently. So I always go to say uh, I go always go through the whole table and say what kind of information do I want to have so let's say sales ID yes makes sense tax group makes sense doesn't make 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 sense and 
basically just go through all these kind of like things to so say well currency code yeah this would make sense to have the currency code as well in our uh, in our um, analysis available which means I always just right click I say move and say to the beginning he added it in here so I go I move on and just search for um, other things I'm going to to um, I, I want to use so as you can see here as well he's got he's applied the step of reordered column so which means uh, he just saved step by step what I'm actually doing within this query so the default dimension of course for later on we are going to add financial dimensions so we do need to have the default dimension um, delivery date maybe not um, Delivery postal address also makes sense. We can that we are able later on to add the the address. Of course, we we would need to add then different other table invent trans ID for the moment. Not invoice date, of course. So we are going to move and go as well to the beginning. Then we stay at I. So um, not interest. That is not delivery date not 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 invent quantity to the beginning so basically quantity and invoice ID of course to the beginning and item ID of course as well so always just right click on the column move it to the beginning and search for other things you want to have well okay line amount and line amount mst so line amount always the amount in um, currency so if you sell something in uh, euros then it will be in euro even if your even if your legal entity is swiss franc for example and the line amount mst always is always the amount in your um, accounting currency so um, if the legal entity is in swiss francs then it would be in swiss francs of course so let's search for other things that we i'm not going to use Discounts, so for example, of course, you would be able to use discount, uh, choose discounts as well, would make sense, but in my case, I'm not going to do it. But of course, the item name as well to the beginning. So um, we stuck, we were stuck at name, so that's fine, that's fine, that's uh, or which says ID, I'm not going to use that quantity. I do have the invent quantity, ah, let's use the sales quantity, it's more accurate actually, so I'm going to use that and. So I'm going to use that quantity because it's a sales quantity, which means the invent quantity I actually don't need. So I just say um, move uh, to the end again. So all the things that, that um, I'm not going to use, I'm just going to um, put on the right hand side. Why that? Um, yeah, it's something you're going to see um, right afterwards. So price unit, that's uh, return, that's not sales category, not really sales unit. Also not interested in that. Um, tax amount as well, not tax item group yeah tax item no no you're not going create the date time when it was created not really but of course the data area id so nothing else then the company so which which legal which legal entity um, did it and um, also use the rec id also makes sense just to keep it within the query because otherwise, if you want to make some connections over the rec ID, you won't be you won't be able to do that because you won't have this information anymore available. Good. So um, first step is always, um, or I do it always like this: that you that I just put all the information I want to keep in my query on the left side. Why that? You see, just right now, because now I can go and say, well, okay, I want to I take that one here. So from here till the end. So I just go to the total right side, click shift, click on that uh, right click and remove columns. Which means now I do have just those columns available which I want to have for my analysis later on. And the good thing is just by putting it all to the left side. So if I if later on I realize, well, I do want to have um, a, another field. So for example, I, wa oh, I want to have the item the item sales tax group, for example, I can just go here one step up, then the columns are added again because I went a step back. So if I click here, the columns are removed 
if I go one step back, then I have the columns back again, which means I'm always able actually just to say, well, okay, I do want to delete the remove columns, search for the new field I want to have. So as I said, the um, item sales tax group, which was, which was somewhere here. I'm sure I saw it. So, which is here. I can then say here again, right click, move to the beginning and then just do exactly the same as before from the column you're not going to need till the end with shift click on invent quantity, right click, uh, remove columns. And yeah, now you have as well the item sales tax group here available. Good. So uh, next thing you should do is um, basically just to check if um, the data types are correct. So which means name, ABC makes sense. Line amount, MST. So all the amounts I would actually just put here a fixed decimal number. So just a dollar sign actually that it is kind of like currency. So you just have kind of like the maximum, I think, four digits it is kind of like where where um, the decimal number has much more. Um, invoice ID, ABC makes sense. Invoice date, currently it is um, a date time. So as you can see, you have not just the date, but also the time, which normally doesn't make sense for an invoice date. So I just choose here date, makes it easier afterwards. Well. Delivery postal address is just a key. Default dimension is just a key, which we, of course, are going to connect later on. And, well, the other things are fine from my point of view. I do have the invoice ID, right? Yeah, I have it. Perfect. Okay, so when you finished with your um, query, uh, you can just click here on close and apply. And Power BI is now basically just adjusting the query. If you would have a look, if you would have had a look at um, the size of the file, then you would also realize that it is now much smaller because um, Power BI, of course, is just saving those um, those column in here that we have that we have in here. Good. Okay. So next, normally just kind of like so you are always able to rename the things. So I just you can just go here to the data and on let's say this table, I just go to rename it and I say. F for facts table because it is our facts table. As I said, the lowest granularity um, is always the facts table. So let's say uh, invoice, invoice lines and enter. Good. So he just called it F invoice lines now. Then for all those things, I just like to kind of like rename it in a way that you are still able to realize it. But in the end, those, this is the information that the end user is going to use when they are going to create their analysis. So they should understand it. And for example, data area ID, they won't be able to understand what this is. So yeah, so I just say here, currency, um, data area ID is the company. So rename, so company company default dimension um, well default dimension as you have seen before it is just a key which means this key we are definitely ne never going to make any kind of analysis based on that key we are going to make analysis based on the financial dimension value but not on that key so in such ca case um, always going you always have to hide it actually because if you won't hide it uh, the user would use it uh, and it would not make sense at all to use um, default dimension because it would actually generate a sum of the default dimension uh, rec ID, which doesn't make sense. So therefore, you can just right click and say, say hide in report view. The same for the delivery postal address, which is, as you can see here as well, just um, a number. So we can also say uh, hide in report view, invoice date. Um, yeah, you can say, yeah, invoice date makes sense. But yeah, you can ha have spaces just a way that um, the people like to uh, that, that it looks nice kind of like so and here the invoice id um item id is maybe just item line amount and line amount mst i'm going to show you right afterwards but uh, here name let's say rename item name the rec id as well just hide it sales id 
um, sales ID yeah. and text group rename um, sales text group and the text item group rename it um, item sales text group good perfect now how does it look like how does it look like now in the report view so in the report view as you can see all those which were hidden are not shown so we just have those available which um which we said well okay you are visible within the report view and the, and the end use then of course is just able to use um those things in here so let's quickly go back to data as i said um i just want currently we still have way too many companies in there and i just want to have um them and i want to have usmf so i just want to import those two companies now what do we need to do well basically nothing else than the same thing that we did before in the query we can just add kind of like filters so which means um i just go here on edit query and i can say well here in the company I can click on load more and then I should see all the companies. I can say, well, what do I want to select? Well, I just want to have um, DEMF and I just want to have USMF. So just those two companies should be loaded into my Power BI file. Good. Um, I can add other kind of queries. So for example, um, yeah, that's the cost invoice trans table for example it's always the thing that you also have a uh, free text invoices or in this within this table but always with um, a blank item id so um, which means nothing else than you do have here some uh, some sales which which have no item because they were based on a free text invoice so in our case actually we i just say well remove empty because i don't want to have uh, my free text invoices um, free text invoices as well in within this um, analysis. Also the applied steps to make it easier for you, uh, just rename it. So for example, um, delete free text invoices one before um, filter out other companies. Yeah, so you can just all the steps, just name it in a way that, you, that you're still able or just that you still um, know what you did, actually. Good, so click on close and apply and, um, well, Power BI is actually doing the same thing as before. So it just basically applied the things and as you can see here, now we just have those two companies available. So, good, I think this was um, the first part i'm going to move on actually um in an in a second part so i do i will have i will make some, several videos about that um because yeah it will take a while and we will need to add quite a lot of um tables and in the end to have um, a real good sales analysis because up to now there isn't yet that much available so i hope i see you in part two and have a nice day